Hello and welcome back everyone. In this tutorial video, I'm going to talk to you about um, subphrenic spaces. Okay, before starting talking about this topic, let us uh, understand what we see in this figure. First of all, you know, superiorly, you can see the diaphragm as, okay. And inferior to it, of course, you will see the liver and part of from the uh, esophagus, abdominal part, and the stomach, large intestine, and a couple of arrows, right and left and so forth. And we see here a falciform ligament. There is a video on falciform ligament. You can watch it if you need to know more. Okay, then what? You know, there is a space or spaces between the diaphragm and the liver and these spaces known as subphrenic phrenic it means something related to the diaphragm sub that means below or inferior to so if you look anteriorly you know this is the we can see this is uh, uh, the anterior surface of the uh, liver which is part of diaphragmatic service because we know that the diaphragmatic service of the liver is the anterior part I would say this okay the anterior part and superior part and part of the posterior part of the liver so all of these parts represent the diaphragmatic service anyway now if we look here we can see that there is a kind of two spaces one on the right and one on the left this space is called subphrenic space and the subphrenic space that you see here is divided into right subphrenic space and left subphrenic space which is related to the right lobe of the liver and left lobe of the liver divided of course by falciform ligament this ligament okay now what's the significance of subphrenic spaces the right or the left Okay, if you go down, you know that there is an anterior lateral abdominal wall in the right and on the left. And between the abdominal wall, there is a kind of also another space, right? Either on the right or on the left. It's called right or left lateral paracolic. Para, that means parallel to the colic, to the uh, large intestine. It's called lateral paracolic gatter. Okay, so if the, uh, and you know, the uh, arrows indicate for the direction of the movement of the peritoneal fluid. So if the peritoneal fluid that um, uh, moves in this direction up, toward the diaphragm and subphrenic spaces if it's infected that means you have to expect the spread of the infection at these spaces and most importantly in the subphrenic space also you know this is the location of gallbladder and this is you see the duodenum and here and you know the appendix all of these structures uh, like more they are more vulnerable for or suspected for uh, ulceration or rupturing or perforation so the content of for example gallbladder or appendix or content from the duodenum can be leaked out into abdominal cavity and then uh, will lead to infect the peritoneal fluid so may some or all of these contents can be transmitted up to subphrenic 
spaces, right? This is what has been, uh, you know, you have to expect to find abscess or accumulation of infection or infected peritoneal uh, abscess or fluid in this space. That's why it's important. Let, let me uh, make it clear also for you uh, that by saying mainly because all these structures like gallbladder, appendix, or duodenum is a little bit close to the right, so mostly you will find abscess or infection or infection accumulation of infection uh, nearby the right subphrenic space more than the left one. Also, guys, if uh, you uh, look to the sagittal section here, uh, you will see. I wish, you know, I want to um, track you to this, which is the transverse mesocolon. This is a uh, transverse mesocolon, you know, connects the transverse colon to the posterior abdominal wall, and it divides the abdominal cavity into two cavities. One is called supracolic compartment, and another inferior one, which is called infracolic compartment so the another space that's located under the liver because you know we talked about the subphrenic uh, recess or subphrenic uh, space that's located between the diaphragm and the liver right and now I'm gonna talk about another space, but it's below or inferior to the liver. It's called subhepatic space. The subhepatic, it's sub, that means below. Hepatic, below the liver, not below the phrenic, the diaphragm, no. Subhepatic, this is the subhepatic uh, space. Back again here, you know, the uh, I would say that this portion uh, is located like in the supracolic compartment. Where is that? Here we go. This is the subhepatic, the green one, right? Because this is the liver and this is the subhepatic space, right? It's under the uh, liver. So it's located anteriorly and laterally. Let us move a little bit to the right side. I mean, I would like to move from this area just literally here under this area right I'm gonna go to the right side which is here so you will see that if you move from the subhepatic space superiorly and posteriorly toward the posterior uh, toward the posterior um, abdominal wall you will face another space which is called hepatorenal recess or space this one which is located between the hepato I mean the liver and renal which is right kidney and suprarenal gland so it's called the hepatorenal recess let me raise it and show it again to you okay now it's clear that this is the subhepatic space and if you move uh, posteriorly of course laterally posteriorly and superiorly you will find it like between another recess between the liver and right kidney which is called hepatorenal recess uh, I'm trying to show you like in a different way okay here Let me show you where is it. Okay, so this is the liver and the kidney should be say around say around this area, for example. Let's see close to that and subarenal gland. So if you remove the liver and reflect it up, you will find a space here, right? A space located here between the liver and the right kidney and subarenal gland, and this is space, right? is called like posteriorly huh? it's called um, right posterior subphrenic space or they call it 
um, hepatorenal recess, right? Hepatorenal uh, recess. So this is another view again. You can call it right, but because it's on the right side, right? And posterior, yes, to differentiate it from the anterior subphrenic space. It's subphrenic, yes. At the end, it's below the diaphragm, but it's between the liver and right kidney. So it's called uh, right posterior subphrenic, not anterior, right? Or it's easier to say hepatorenal recess, which is a continuation for the subhepatic space, right? Here. And lastly, guys, I would say that if you look to this, let me erase it. If you look to the uh, sub right posterior subphrenic, let me choose this color. If you look again to the hepatorenal uh, recess, you will find it here. And I think uh, if you uh, watch the uh, video about uh, omental Persa, which is a space that's located um, here behind the stomach, there is a space called omental Persa, and there is an foramen here called uh, epiploic foramen, uh, through which the greater sac connected with it. You know, they call it omental Persa or lesser sac, right? So the greater sac communicated with the lesser sac at the same time. Peritoneal fluid from this omental person that's located behind the stomach uh, will communicate also with this space, with this recess, the hepatorenal recess, right? This is number one. Number two, let me erase it. Number two, also the hepatorenal recess communicates anteriorly with the right subphrenic space, this is space, anteriorly, because we know that the hepatorenal recess posteriorly, so it moves anteriorly, right? Which is important for the abscess and uh, infection and accumulation of pus. Okay, let me iterate what I uh, mentioned about the clinical significance of the uh, uh, these uh, subphrenic uh, spaces. So, uh, you know, if there is a infection or abscess or so forth can be distributed to the subphrenic spaces, anterior, the right or left anterior subphrenic spaces. But when the patient is lying down like this, so the abscess can move to the hepatorenal recess that's located posteriorly again here can the abs can move back to here when the patient lying down okay um that's it for this video hope you will find uh, value in it thank you